the Mughal aviary is about four Muslim women of pre-modern India whose writings never surfaced in our literary history. And I have used the metaphor aviary because aviary, you know, is for birds which has limited freedom. So the zenana or the harem where the women lived is like an aviary to me within which the women could take some free decisions but they were always moving under the rule of their male patrons. I wanted to talk about their writings because their writings are actually self-assertion on their part. They are doubly marginalized in our society as you understand in a very patriarchal South Asian setting and as women coming from Muslim uh, families uh, these women are basically important for me because they talk about us who are uh, kind of dictated by the rule of our uh, male patriarchs and we are uh, taking decisions ourselves but we are always looking at the you know green signal coming from our surroundings these women even uh, though they lived uh, uh, some centuries ago i think some of them enjoyed even more freedom than we do today as women in south asia so i thought i would write about their writings uh, which are hardly translated. These women basically write about their lives. They are writing biographies mostly and some of them wrote poetry and I think their poetry has uh, the basic ingredient of uh, you know re rebellion to some sense, some sense. and uh, these women are practicing uh, in the genres introduced by the male uh, precursors but they have taken the genre to uh, I think uh, uh, to the farthest limit and they are showing that uh, they have that masculine power so as we know these royal women they belonged to uh, 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 powerful families and they practiced many things uh, guided by their male patrons. They were, you know, pioneers of architecture and art. And through their writings as well, like their architecture and art, they also uh, kind of promoted uh, the Mughal, you know, rule and their leg they try to legitimize actually some of them suffered under the rule and they are especially the last two writers Zebunesa and Habba Khatun in my book they were rebels and their poetry carried that spirit of rebellion so I think these women even though they followed the male pioneers in the tradition, they introduced some new imagery, some new vocabulary, and this kind of created new kind of literature, which can be termed as, uh, you know, pioneer literature in women's writings in South Asia. So I think they are very important, and their writings can be. Uh, you know, source of true discovery of their time. They were quite modern, even though, though we are, you know, the mid 16th to uh, seven, late 17th centuries, where they, in which uh, span they wrote, we don't uh, count these times as modern times in South Asia. Th these are late medieval periods, and uh, even though they lived in that time frame, they actually thought much ahead of their time. They were very progressive in their thoughts. So I think this is very important and this book will be a contribution to women's writing in South Asia, to Indology, to history and to literature as well.